So, good afternoon, everyone, uh, and welcome to this uh, first uh, Wednesday in April 2023 uh, 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 workshop Wednesday. Um, my name is Michael Skinner. I'm manager of library services for the Watson Wise Medical Research Library, which is your, your affiliated uh, uh, medical research library out here on the loop. We are uh, all part of the UT Tyler family. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm linked in with, uh, with, with the folks at, at the Munts Library. So uh, we're going to be looking at uh, instrument and survey searching today. And um, just two things to qualify at the top of the hour. Um, instrument is short for behavioral instruments, which is the official name of, of surveys and questionnaires and, and, and the like. Basically, these are, um, these are interview or survey tools, questionnaires, if you will, that are developed to gather data about people's thoughts and feelings and opinions of things, which begs the question why they call it behavioral instrument, because it's not really behavioral, it's more attitudinal, but you know, larger questions than I can answer. Um, but yes, we're gonna be looking at, uh, at good place to go and good strategies to use to find these sorts of tools when you need them. And when you are a researcher, especially in, in uh, the social sciences or in the health sciences um, or in education or in business from time to time, you may find yourself needing them. And having just named all four of those disciplines and the many others besides that rely on these kinds of tools, I should um, hasten to add that today's session, while it looks generic, it's gonna be mainly focused on health science, um, and nursing um, concerns. And I'm gonna be looking at the, uh, the tools that are most helpful for searching in that area. But that doesn't mean that if you are here or you're you know, uh, uh, listening and watching asynchronously from another discipline, it doesn't mean that these things uh, may not be applicable to you. So you know you might just want to give it about five or ten more minutes and see what you think. Um, I believe that many of the uh, the strategies that I'm going to you know uh, model for you with with health science and nursing in particular probably have a wider application. So you might want to toy with them and and just just uh, see what you think. All right. So now that the pattern's out of the way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a series of slides just to um, cover some general matters, and then I'm going to switch out to, to live searching after that and probably go back and forth between. So, all right. So the goals of instrument searching, basically when you're searching for a survey or questionnaire or whatnot, um, you're usually searching uh, for one of three reasons. Hey, you Michael. could be, yeah. I'm sorry, we're still, still seeing your email. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. That's weird. So okay. when you when you moved over to the PowerPoint, you have to like hit share again and go okay. through that process. Sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. This okay, that, that could be cumbersome, but we'll we will manage. We will manage. All right, here we go. All right. So okay, so let me go back. Just go back to slide so that you can see. Come on. Just just how pretty the intro slide was. There it was, and here we go. Okay, are, are we all seeing goals of instrument searching now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, basically, uh, three three goals. You know, usually when people are looking for a service and the like, uh, either you're trying to get hold of the full text of a specific instrument or instruments on a particular topic so that you can adapt it or just use it as it is. Um, but you need to get hold of the questions because you don't know what they are. Um, Sometimes you're after supporting psychometrics. What are psychometrics? They are the background studies usually done after the survey has been developed that helps to validate it, it validate its reliability and how accurately it, it asks the questions that the people who designed it think that it's asking. Um, so, uh, and, and sometimes those studies are done by the people who actually designed and de developed the instrument. Sometimes they're, they're uh, run by others, but um, they're good to have, and, and they provide uh, support for your the rationale for your actually adopting a particular uh, measure for when you're writing up your study, uh, you know, to get it published. So it's good to have psychometrics if, if, if you, you can get them. Usually, psychometrics that they're available, they're not difficult to find. Um, but it's you know, and and the third reason is to use either the instrument uh, verbatim or to adapt and use the instrument for one's own research. So maybe you've been successful in getting hold of the questions, but you, 
some of the questions that you're coming across just don't exactly match your context or your your intended population. Um, and you just don't want to go off on your own with that without getting permission because that tends to be bad and that can lead to lawsuits and whatnot. So it, it's good to get permission from from the people who hold copyright on an instrument. And uh, so the most challenging types of, of, of uh, questions are, are goal you know, those that, that, that uh, center on goals one and goal three, either getting the full text of the instrument itself um, or getting permission to use it. All right. Now. My, my question here uh, presupposes that uh, searching for instruments is always difficult. And as I was uh, sharing with, with Sarah before we started, um, it's come to my attention that that's not always the case. Um, sometimes it's not difficult finding you know, exactly what you're looking for in terms of instruments. Um, because of my role, um, I, I tended, especially in, in, in uh, past years, to have both graduate students and faculty come to me requesting help finding you know, instruments on a particular topic or a particular instrument. Um, and I usually tended to get curly questions, so I assumed that they were all curly. But it, but it just occurred to me this morning, after you know doing some test searching and finding that it wasn't that difficult, that maybe I was just getting the curly ones, and that was kind of skewing my 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 view of things. So sometimes sometimes it's easy to find what you're looking for. Sometimes it isn't. On those occasions when it isn't, um, there are reasons why it is sometimes difficult, and those reasons usually relates to the fact that while we have a, a very well developed grid. Uh, in, in the publishing uh, uh, universe for finding article content, dissertations, um, books, and whatnot, um, we don't always do such a good job collectively of mapping the grid for this type of metadata. Okay, so I got a, got a cloud up here that uh, refers to various reasons metadata missing in action. Um, some publishers just don't prioritize that that sort of content, and so they don't make a push for including that as an appendix, uh, you know, to to the study. Um, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to to contact an author if you're looking to to find the author because they've either retired or they've died or some such reason as that. There can be a lot of reasons, but basically, um, it's just you know, it, it's off grid, and sometimes the the the, the people respond where the, the, the uh, um, instruments are off-grid too. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to show you some strategies for dealing with that uh, when that uh, ar arises. Um, implications when it is difficult uh, for uh, instrument searching. Instrument searching can be a slow and time-consuming process. I can vouch for that. I, I can tell you it's probably the, the most time-intensive thing that I do. I do a lot of mediated searching for people. And... Uh, it does take a lot of time and it requires a methodical process. It also requires good tools, um, all of which we'll explore here. Okay, one of my favorite quotes uh, from uh, Frank Herbert is this one. The first step in avoiding a trap is knowing of its existence. And that's kind of a cardinal rule when it comes to finding um, instruments. Um, to adapt that to that uh, saying, the first step in finding an instrument is knowing its exact title. Uh, I, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, it's one of those things, if you have the title, you're halfway there. You, you, you might need other details as well, but you got to have the title. you got to have the right title or it's going to be a real struggle. So the data points that will help you track down an instrument, I've already referred to the instrument name or title. That's, that's super important. Um, publication data is all, also very helpful. Um, um, almost always, there will be a debut article somewhere. It may not include the full text of the instrument, but it will let you know that it exists and, and somebody has created it. Um, and that, that's an important data point. Um, getting hold of the author's names is also a critical third data point. And ideally, if you can get hold of the de debut citation, that, that is the bee's knees. So all of that will help you in your quest for finding uh, citations. Uh, citations, and ultimately uh, behavioral instruments. All right. So um, as I said at the top of the hour, this is a health science focused uh, uh, webinar. So I'm going to focus on the tools that help find um, uh, the titles of uh, behavioral instruments for the health sciences and nursing. And uh, the four most helpful that I have found are APA Psych Info, which is available on both campuses. Um, uh, Maine and North Campus, CINAHL, which is available on both campuses, Mental Measurements Yearbook and with tests, 
that's only available on the main campus and health and psychosocial instruments happy that's also only available on the main campus um when I start a search, I mostly focus on the top two and less so on the bottom two. And the reason for that is the top two are much, much broader. Um, they cover a wider swath of the literature. Mental Measurements Yearbook with Tests in Print and Health and Psychosocial Instruments, they both, they're very, very focused. And if, if they have what you're looking for, that's great, but they just don't cover the literature as, as much. And so there isn't as much to, to find. But they're both uh, happy hunting grounds and, and good places to search, and particularly health and psychosocial instruments. Um, it has a lot of great helps in there, a lot of good indexing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, I'm going to jump out of here. I'm going to leave it on this page, jump out of here real quick, and I guess I'm going to have to, to, to reacquire y'all in just a minute. I'm going to switch over here to the databases and go back out here. It's going to be stopped. Okay, so let me just reacquire that. Screen share again. We want it on. Hang on a second. Let me get that up. Um, stop share. Okay, screen share again. Share. Okay, are y'all looking at my, my browser? Yes. Should be should be looking at my browser. Okay, so I'm in Business Source Complete and it's loading. Should be loading. Well, I'll give it a, about three, two, one. If it doesn't do that, I will just jump out of that and get right back in here again. Going to go back out to the main page, and we're just going to go. I'm just going to quickly take you through um, and show you the handy features in both uh, uh, Synol and in PsychInfo. One of the reasons why I like both uh, PsychInfo and CINAHL for looking for the titles of um, mental, uh, of, of uh, psychosocial in instruments, behavioral instruments, sorry, um, is that they both have a, a searchable field um, called variously instrumentation in, um, in CINAHL and tests and measurements in, in APA PsychInfo. So I can search for anything, uh, I can search for any kind of instrument once I'm in this field, and it, it'll just bring up studies that use uh, uh, instruments with a particular topic design. So let's say I was interested in smoking cessation, and I wanted to see what um, instruments were available on smoking cessation. Once I highlight the instrumentation field, I just type in my term and click search, and it brings me up a list of 52. And the neat thing is, I can just go through each and every one of these. I can go to the detailed record and I can scroll down through the detail and go down here to the instrumentation field. And it's going to give me the titles of, of the instruments that uh, any, any studies uh, that, that, that uh, link up with this have. So, so for down here, I've got the trans theoretical model questionnaire for smoking cessation. Trans theoretical model is one of the nursing uh, 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 theories of care. And so this, this was a particular uh, instrument that was developed specifically to uh, um, to look at smoking cessation through that uh, that that prism that lens, um, I, I can just keep going. I can go to the next one, uh, studying uh, stimuli and smoking behaviors uh, among self-identified gifted smokers and strategies for customizing cessation of sport. Um, this one actually has several. So I've got the the Fagerstrom test for nicotine dependence, overexcitability questionnaire, cessation motivation questionnaire, and smoking triggers questionnaire. So if I wanted, what I could do is I could just go through this, troll this entire results list, and create like like a wish list. You know, just copy and paste these out, put them in either a Word file or an or an Excel spreadsheet, and then go back through and and search for each of these individually. Um, and have a have a closer look at, at their particulars, but you you got to know what's out there in order to know what's going to be the best fit for you. And there's there's no better place to start, particularly if you're looking for for health science uh, instruments than coming to Synal Complete. Let me show you the same thing in uh, uh, APA Psych Info. I'm just so I'm just going to go to Choose Databases up here. Going to select Deselect, and then go back down here to APA Psych Info. And like I say. Um, They've got the same kind of indexing, but they just call it by a different name. So in APA Psych Info, they call it tests and measures, but I can do the same thing again, see what they've got here. So I'll, just, I'll keep smoking cessation. They probably have something on smoking cessation. Wow. 
Can you believe that they have even more uh, uh, instruments on smoking? Well, they have more studies on smoking cessation than, than CINAHL did. It's pretty awesome. Does ostracism help, help smokers quit? All right. And so uh, let's find their tests and measurements and look at this one. I got a treasure trove. So I could just come down here, highlight them all, copy them, and either paste them into a Word document or a spreadsheet, and then go back and, and look at them at, at my leisure. Now, this is good, um, but I wouldn't leave it here because usually these names, the, these names are supplied by the indexer, and the indexers aren't always careful. So, so these may not be the exact names of these instruments, and you could get caught out. So, so yeah, you're going to want to do your own due diligence and search each of these. Do I would do a title search for each of these separately, um, you know, in uh, APA Psych Info and. Uh, and in CINAHL and, and other databases and see what you can find. But that's the first step. You gotta know what's out there. You gotta know the names and these are good places to come to find the names. Um, let's go and have a look at now at Happy and uh, Mental uh, Measurements Yearbook. So let's go Health and Psychosocial Instruments. Gee, there it is right there. Okay. All right, so now with APA Psych Info and CINAHL, those are both uh, full text databases. Um, Happy is more, it's more of an index type uh, resource, um, but it's got good stuff in here. And the thing that I really like about Happy, even though it's not as large a database as those others, <laughs> famous last words, it's, it's got a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of content on smoking cessation. But what I really like about Happy is that it does a great job of, of telling you about the record that it's looking at. So if I let's have a look at this first one here, before and after measuring physician behavior, attitudes, comfort, and knowledge about smoking uh, cessation counseling. All right. So in source notes, it tells you if this is the primary source, secondary source, tertiary, it gives you a list of hierarchically how how the evidence fits together. So if this is a primary source, this is most likely a debut article where, where an instrument was, was first mentioned. And that can be helpful because, you know, very frequently, that's where if 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 the if the the questions themselves, if the test questions are going to be included, they're going to be included in that article. Uh, you pray that they are, because if they aren't, it, it's a little bit more difficult. But you've got um, title of the article, you, you've got the source, Journal of the American uh, Board of Family uh, Medicine, and you've got the, uh, uh, the citation details. So if I wanted, I could chase this one back. Uh, I, I could see if we have this in our uh, journals by, by title list, and then uh, 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 search for it that way. And if not, I could request the article on interlibrary loan. But, uh, but yes, yeah, it's, it's good for that. Yeah, you can you can uh, re request the item directly uh, through interlibrary loan just by clicking on the borrow uh, from another library link, and that'll get you going there as well. Um, good value, health and psychosocial instruments. And now let's have a look at mental measurements and tests and print. Just want you to have a chance to see them all. And these are all available through, um, through EBSCOhost. Okay, they only had uh, they only had one smoker complaint scale, and that comes from 1992. All right, and the source was okay. The 11th edition of the Mental Measurements uh, Yearbook, and you've got the data down there. It, it gives you a description of the instrument and who the authors were, and you can go search them that way. Um, because the instrument was created in 1992, I wouldn't have any confidence that that, that is a current uh, email address, but at least we know where they were. The Dr. Schneider, who appears to be the corresponding spawning author, she was at UCLA in 1992. Probably want to do a Google search on her or do an author uh, author search in uh, Academic Search Complete or one of the other databases and see if she's A, still publishing, and B, where her current affiliation is. Because um, if you're interested in getting her permission, you're going to have to I mean, she could still be at UCLA, but but uh, um, faculty tend to be peripatetic, and they tend to 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 like to to travel. So she could be someplace else. Pretty good chance of that. All right, all right. So that's a survey of all four of these. Let me go back now, and I'm going to go back to Sinal, and we're going to go back to our test question, our our test search, which was not smoking cessation, but we are looking at uh, vaccine hesitancy. Um, 
it's been in the news a lot, and there's a lot of, of current interest in it because of uh, you know the recent uh, COVID. So let's just do a, a search for uh, vaccine hesitancy. And because I'm interested in instruments, I'm gonna come down here to the bottom half of the screen, find the instrumentation field, make sure that that one's highlighted. So we're just focused on um, retrieving records that have vaccine hesitancy in the instrumentation field. Click search. All right, and we got 16 search results. All right, that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, looking at some of these, I can see right off the bat that um, we're going to have to call this list um, just because some of these uh, these instruments are adaptations of, like, uh, let's say, uh, the vaccine hesitancy scale. The, 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 this is a Turkish adaptation of it. Um, that's great, but you know, if you want to do a survey in English. Um, you, you, you've got to have, you know, a version of it that's in English that's been tested in English. You can't just translate a, a, a scale or an instrument from another language into your language and, and run with it. It's just not not the way it's done. Um, and unfortunately, we, you know, be, because the the title and the abstract are in English, you know, just just putting in the language filter is not going to get rid of this. But we can just uh, uh, visually ignore that and move on. All right, so down here, vaccine hesitancy during COVID pandemic, a latent class analysis of middle-aged and older adults. That one, I mean, if, if we're not interested in, in uh, vaccine hesitancy as it relates to COVID, uh, it might not be immediately relevant, but let's have a look anyway. Let's look down at their instrumentation field and it's, they, they just use the generic vaccine hesitancy scale. So if I wanted, I could uh, copy and paste uh, this particular um, uh, title into a Word document and just uh, begin creating a tally, a results tally. Injection fears in COVID-19 vaccine hesitancy. And this one used the Oxford COVID vaccine hesitancy scale, specific phobia scale, medical fear survey and injections and blood subscale. Interesting, interesting. I'm keeping going here. Um, vaccine hesitancy scale modified. Okay, and you'll notice here that you'll you'll also see a, an abbreviated version of the title. Um, that can be helpful, um, but again, you're going to want to to just check and and, and see if if the uh, if the titles match, if, if what the indexer provides matches with what the authors do. So for this one, we can actually uh, access the full text. So let's just copy down here the name vaccine hesitancy scale modified and see if that's what's used in the document. I'm going to go to PDF full text. Okay, and I'm just going to type Control F for find and I'm going to Okay, okay, they, they already got that one in there. It's not in there like that. So let's do this. Let's just take out the modified and see what they have. They've got seven references to it. Okay, so let's just go down through the list. Really? <laughs> okay, okay, so in reaction to increasing resistance to vaccination, SAGE Working Group developed a vaccine hesitancy scale to quantify vaccine hesitancy among uh, parents, okay? So that's good. I think this is the one that was modified and uh, there's a reference to it in at reference seven. So we might just be able to jump down to it by clicking that. There we go. Shapiro, Tar Tatar, uh, Duby and uh, whatnot vaccine hesitancy scale, some psychometric properties and validation. Okay. Well, now that's a solid lead. Okay. So that, that looks like a debut article and it looks like they're doing an initial validation. So um, we could, if we wanted, we could, uh, let me just, I know you're not going to see this because of the way it's set up, but I'm just going to uh, to create a Word document, put this one aside so we can just do a bit of a paper chase here in a minute. And I'll come right back. Just going to creating a, a Word document and just going to tap that one in there. All right. So. So that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. You're using you're using the paper trail through the references to try and find that debut article, in the hopes that once you find that debut article, you'll be able to locate the the if if you're after the 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 questions themselves, locate the questions. So let me jump uh, back to um, the library main page, and I'm probably are, are y'all still seeing what I, what I'm I, I'm I'm on one of the uh, uh, the interlibrary loan pages. Are you seeing that? Or are you still back on the database page? We're seeing um, the ILL form. Whew, 
that's good. That's good. I wasn't sure that I wasn't sure uh, that that was going to work, but it did. All right. So let's go back one more. And I'm going to go journals by title. And I'm going to go back and find that reference. And we're looking for vaccine. So vaccine, just type that one in. There we go. All right. And we're looking for 2018. And volume 36.5. So we'll just, whew, gosh. This is voluminous. All right, there we are, 36.5. And we are after vaccine hesitancy scale. And once I get to this level, I'm just looking at the page numbers because I know that uh, the page that this article starts on is 660. There we go, vaccine hesitancy scale, scale psychometric properties and validation. And here we go. So now what we're looking for is appendix supplemental material. If, they, if they're gonna have a copy of the questions anywhere, it's gonna be here. Let's go download the Word document and load it. Are you all still with me? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? I'm looking at the questions. Are you seeing them? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So this is how it's supposed to work all the time. Doesn't always do this. This, yeah, this, this is easy. Okay. So, um, the, the, yeah, this is the way it's supposed to work. You've got the, you've got the actual questions at the top here, and then you've got a whole bunch of, of, uh, of work that these authors did to to validate this instrument initially. That's the kind of thing you 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 want every time you do it. Doesn't happen, but it's good when it does. Always good when it does. All right. So let me back here now. I'm going to I'm going to go full screen with the uh, with the PowerPoint slides and show you. And I'm assuming you you you're not seeing the PowerPoint slides, are you? Yes, we are. Okay, I'm going to stop asking that now because it seems to be doing its thing. So, uh, yeah, all right. So here, here is the process. Here's what I did. So I began with the topic. In this case, I was looking initially for instruments on vaccine hesitancy. Started with a topic, then I went to a database, went to CINAHL. I could have gone to APA Psych Info. Um, I did an instrumentation search in in uh, CINAHL. I filtered for instrumentation in the field. And then I just started eyeballing the titles. You know, I, I went to the instrumentation field in each, of, each and every record. I went to the detailed record, looked at the instrumentation field. Um, and then I started mentally compiling a list of titles. Um, and then at that point, I had the option of branching and doing a PDF search, which is the one I, I took. I did, I did that option and it paid off in, in this instance. Um, I could also have gone back and do, done a revised uh, instrumentation search on the basis of, of the of the, the title that I was seeing in the instrumentation field of the detailed record. Um, I find it safest to start with, with a PDF scan first, just to make sure um, that you're getting the title right, um, and then proceed to the, uh, the instrumentation search, that revised instrumentation search if you want. But, but that's the basics of, of building a list of, of, of instruments on a particular topic. This is the easiest way that I've found to do it. Um, and yeah, it, it, it works. It, it's, it's pretty effective. There are other tools that you can use, and I will mention them briefly at the end. One of them is ProQuest dissertations and theses online. It's also good because obviously people who are earning masters and, and uh, doctoral degrees, they do a lot of original research and many of them are using these kinds of tools. Many of them are creating these ty ty types of tools. So um, that that is a happy hunting ground for this sort of material as well. All right. So I kind of went over this. So I went with option A, scan the document. And I use control F in um, the browser that opens up the, the text feature within CINAHL. Um, it'll open up the text search feature in the browser itself if that's not available in the database that you're in. It's just a great tool, control F. Um, confirm or amend the title from what you're seeing in the text. Search the text for debut instrument reference, which I did. Uh, and I was able to find that reference and then search for the debut article uh, full text using browsing in, in, in our case. So that, that worked just perfectly. And then with uh, option B, revised instrumentation search, um, I could uh, go with a revised vaccine hesitancy scale using the instrumentation field and then filter for English language. All right, now I've already covered this, but just to summarize, um, Using when you come across uh, instruments in other languages, even if they're using the exact title that that, that you've got, um, 
if the instruments are themselves in another language, that's not really helpful to you. So you're going to want to set those aside just because they're not interchangeable. You, you've got to use an instrument that's been designed for your language population. All right. So I talked about the test and measurement field in Psych Info. Um, that, that is the, the matching field for instrumentation in CINAHL, but there are other ways besides the instrumentation or test and measurement uh, fields to search. Um, both uh, CINAHL and Psych Info have uh, options for searching in their control vocabulary and in, in their subjects. Um, and I'll show you um, three options here. You've got test construction, test validity, and psychometrics in um, in Psych Info. And let me just get out of here and go back out and go back to. Okay, so I'm back in CINAHL and I'm about to jump out. Jump back out to APA Psych Info. I'm going up to choose databases up the top. I'm going to select deselect all because that's the quickest way to get out of whatever uh, database you're currently in. Go back down the page on the left hand side, find APA Psych Info. And okay, this time instead of searching for vaccine hesitancy, we might come back to that, but, but right now we want to find, uh, we want to see if they have test construction as one of their options in suggest subject terms. I say that hypothetically, I already know that they do, and I'm just showing you the pathway to find it. All right. So here we are um, uh, in the uh, APA thesaurus of psychological index terms, the, the result for our, our, our test construction search. And lo and behold, there's our option right there at the top. Okay. So to add it in and search it, I have to highlight it and then click add. It's going to put it up here in the search field with the appropriate coding. So DE space test construction in uh, close quotes. That's how you set it up. And that got us 72,000, almost 73,000 search results. So now um, we could go back and do, let's, let, let's go back to smoking cessation, our original one. Let's see what they've got for that in test construction. Okay, so they've got 380 search results for that. So this is another option, a, a, another way of, of approach. So looking at our, our titles here, understanding the role of e-cigarette use and smoking cessation based on the uh, stages of change model. So I'm not seeing a lot of, of titles that announce, hey, we just created a brand new smoking cessation instrument. That's okay. It's still worth having a look at these because most likely if, if they've got smoking, uh, if they've got smoking cessation, if they have um, test construction in the subjects, there's a pretty good chance that they created uh, created their own instruments. So we explore the role of e-cigarette use in smoking cessation based on stages of change model, which is a framework for describing the process of smoking cessation. We use nationwide cross-sectional data for adults. Okay, well, maybe they didn't Maybe they didn't even bother getting their own data. Maybe they use somebody else as well. That's okay. They still have tests and measurements down here and they, they used two, uh, uh, it looks like they used Two? No, maybe it's one. Prevalence stages of change in cigarette smoking survey measure. That's a mouthful. Um, they, they just use the one, but we can keep going here. We can look at what else they've got. Um, test measure, self-reported que uh, questionnaire measure. Boy, that's kind of generic. Let's try one more. See if we can get one more that on um, what we're looking for here. Um, test measurements, self-reported seven-day point prevalence abstinence measure. Closer to the target, but not quite there. Um, test and measurements, prevalence of nicotine vaping products measure. That's pretty much on target. And heaviness of smoking index. All right. So as you can see, uh, just, just another way of, of uh, parsing things out and, and having a look. Um, and going back to the original uh, list on our page here. Um, besides test construction, we can search for test validity or psychometrics. Um, and, and the examples at the bottom here are tests and measurements. Uh, so we, we can use the index tests and measurements and then social support and weight loss if we wanted to look for um, results that way. Or we can use social support. We can use our, our topic uh, selection uh, or selections and then use a specific subject term and search for it that way. So just two ways of, of getting at the same data. All right. 
We can do the same thing, believe it or not, we can do the same thing in PubMed as well. I don't use PubMed a lot for this purpose um, just because it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have the index field options that the other two do, but you can use it and it's its largest biomedical database. So there's no reason we couldn't. So um, the way you do it here is by, uh, by their mesh subject terms. So they have two options you can use. You can search by surveys and questionnaires that mesh term or by psychometrics. You can pair them, you can search them individually. I've got examples down here. Um, let's try surveys and questionnaires or psychometrics and see what we get here. So let's go copy that, go back out here. Let's go to PubMed. I'm just gonna plug those two mesh terms in, add them in. Okay, and that got us over a million records. I'm gonna go back and add our next term. Let's go social support. And weight loss. Okay, and then I will just tag those two together. Okay, we got 835, so smaller results. So we're, we're gonna expect something really, really small for the final result, but that's okay. We'll see what we get here. So number six, hashtag or pound sign, and then pound sign seven for our second search set, add those in. Not bad, we got 133 results. Okay, so um, let's have a look and see if we can, now, unlike um, CINAHL and PsychInfo, it's not going to show like particular instruments. It's not going to catalog them in in the in the the uh, detail display. But maybe we'll find a reference to it in the methods section. So these methods were formed using great approach. The recommendations were formed using great approach, like strength and certainty. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's no good. That's no good. Let's go on to the next one. Social support for healthy behaviors, scale psychometrics and prediction of weight loss among women in a behavioral program. Let's have a look here. Okay, oh, randomized to one or two groups. They completed subscales at baseline weight loss assessed six months later. Okay, so that's not gonna help us as it is. We're gonna have to look at the detailed record. Let's go into PubMed Central. Um, uh, the National Library of Medicine's repository of open access stuff. And I'm just gonna do control F. That's gonna open up our, um, it's gonna open up our uh, text search options. And we don't have that name. So how are we gonna do this? Let's go with, oh, maybe that's not gonna work yet. Let's, let's come down here and have a look at the methods section. Okay, social support, sabotage, okay, and sat, health, okay, proof. Okay. Strategic analysis, statistical analysis, demographics, okay, measures, okay. Bear with me, I'm seeing this for the first time, so I'm kind of making this up as I'm going. Four subscales, each had six items, participants rated how frequently, Likert scale, so it looks like they might have made it their own in the South version. Okay. Sabotage subscales each had three items. Right. Um, let me go down to the bottom here and see if I can find ideally an appendix that has. Oh, sorry, folks, I'm striking out with this one. Did so well with that 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 uh, one we did in the earlier one, but not so much this one. Let's go on to the next one. Dominoes of deliberation, uh, geriatric assessment, screening assessment can be completed in 10 minutes, administered questionnaires, performance based. Of course, we don't have a lot of detail there to go on. Perceived social support for exercise and weight loss for uh, adolescents undergoing sleeve gastrectomy. Okay, I like the way they set this one up better. Okay, adolescents, uh, 101 adolescents, uh, preoperative body mass index ranged from, et cetera, et cetera. Structural equation modeling was used. Okay, okay, diagnostic eating disorder scale. Okay, so there's something we can look for here in youth behavioral sur surveillance system. All right, let's have a look, see if we have access to the full text here. All right, got access to something here. Hopefully the whole shoot and match. 
All right, so now let's diagnostic scale. Okay, so we're just gonna use the text search feature. Okay, so it's the eating disorder diagnostic scale. Let's see where else I've got it, right there. And there's a reference to it on, pay, on reference 27, which takes us down to here. Opens up a separate um, option. Okay, so it looks like Stice, Rizvi, and Telk created a uh, eating disorder diagnostic scale development and diagnostic uh, validation of the eating disorder diagnostic scale scale created in 2000. Uh, so there you go. We have uh, the data with which to 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 pursue that one, and hopefully we can we can chase down the uh, the instrument in the appendix of of that article. Um, if it's not there then um, it's early enough that we're probably going to have to contact the authors directly to, to see if we can get a copy of it. Um, for instruments created more recently, sometimes you can go to like the digital repository of the institution where they work. It might be available there. Um, might have to do a little digging. And of course, you know, uh, librarians, that, that's what we're here for. We, we can help you dig if, if, if the question is really curly and you're, you're having trouble finding what you're looking for. But that, that's basically how you do it. Um, in uh, PubMed. All right, so let's go back here. So I've talked about those strategies and there are other places to look to, including Google Scholar and Digi digital uh, uh, ProQuest Digital uh, uh, Dissertations and Theses. Um, one of the ways that I used to search for instruments and you could probably use it very effectively here is just to, to, to make an OR search set for all of the various different names of instruments. So we've got surveys or questionnaires or um, scales. And let's do it like that. Let's not put the plural on it because that's going to be limiting. Let's but the, uh, let's just truncate with the truncation symbol, the asterisk, or survey or questionnaire or scale, or um, let's just go with those. All right, so we'll, we'll search that and then we'll end it together with um, something on vaccine hesitancy. Go back to that one again. All right, so now usually when you're searching at Google, uh, the the uh, the text that you put closest to the left is going to be weighted more heavily. So I'm hopeful that that means that these search results are going to be weighted towards bringing back. Oh, look right here, measuring vaccine hesitancy, the development of a survey tool. Bingo. And if we go, okay, so appendix. Okay, so there's the questionnaire, the very first thing. Appendix A, vaccine hesitancy survey questionnaire. There you go, there are your questions. All right, very good. So you've got that option and you also have the option of searching in ProQuest dissertations and theses. Let's go back out here, go to databases by title. Because I'm trying to show you everything, I'm going very, very quickly, and I'm sorry. I know that I'm going really, really quickly, but I just want to make sure that we don't miss anything. So I'm going to come back down here to the P's, go to ProQuest Dissertations and Theses Global. And let's do the same thing we did over here. Let's just do the exact same search. Just copy and paste that one in here. And see what we get. Okay, implementing vaccinancy hesitancy being for targeted uh, education. Sounds like the kind of thing they'd use an instrument for, so let's have a look and see. All right. Thank you. Now, we have abstract details, preview PDF for the full PDF. Let's just go down here to the end. Let's just scroll all the way to the bottom because usually that gear is going to be right at the back right before you get to your your references. Okay, so we have a pre-visit patient questionnaire. That's going to be general population information, most likely. 
provider reference evidence-based talking points pertaining to Well, maybe that was it after all. Looks like that was it. All right, let's go back up the top here. And let's just pull this in so that we can see it a little clearer. Okay, so please fill in the boxes. Age your child. Okay, so yes, we do. Um, childhood vaccines are important for my child's health. Okay, so yes, we, we do have some sort of scale there. I, I can't, I don't see a name for it. So we probably have to check the methodology to see, you know, if he created his own or he went with something stock standard maybe it's referenced down here no it doesn't seem to be okay so we'd have to go back up the top and see uh if this is original to uh, this author or whether they uh they borrowed it from somebody else all right okay so um For the most part, um, tracking down uh, corresponding authors is usually pretty easy, especially if the instrument that you're looking for it was was created fairly recently. It gets trickier if you're talking about it uh, like something that was created years ago, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes, um, sometimes there was was a theoretical interest in in a topic, and and somebody created an instrument years ago, and then it just dropped, and nobody picked it up. Nobody said no. Nobody kept innovating and creating new uh, instruments, and so the best that you've got, uh, the, the best instrument that you can find to, to to begin either adapting or using or building your own, is something that was created like decades ago. Um, so, how do you go about finding them? Uh, well, you have to you have to find out who owns a copyright. Of course, if 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 the copyright is owned by the by the publisher, it, it's a fairly straightforward process. Just contact the publisher directly, and usually get a timely response. Where that's not the case, um, you find the last known ad email address of the corresponding author, and you begin your inquiries. This is the stuff that we tend to get. So you know if if in the weeds and you've got too much to do um, either as a graduate student or, or, or a member of faculty just shoot us an email and let us know that you need help you know, tracking these details um, and we, we can certainly lend uh, aid and support with this um, yeah send a letter of request uh, okay and this is an example of a letter that I did. Uh, I, I tend to do a lot of these for, for people as this is a third party one that I did uh, Names have been changed to protect identities and whatnot, but uh, dear, dear Dr. Jones, my name is Skinner. I'm a health sciences librarian at the University of Texas at Tyler, and I'm writing you on behalf of Jill Beck, doctoral student in our health science PhD program. Jill is developing a research proposal to study the self-care habits of shift, worker, uh, of shift working health care personnel. Uh, as the basis of her dissertation, she would like to adapt the 12 item, uh, and, and this is totally made up. So if, if, if you're looking for something like this, you're still looking. This one's completely made up. 12 item as care habits inventory developed by you and your colleagues and cited in your 2005 article, Self Care Habits Inventory uh, uh, in the Journal of Industrial Health, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on. But basically, you, you, you just send a polite letter asking permission to, to use the instrument. And, and usually, uh, you know, you know uh, faculty or retired faculty are more than happy to help. Where this gets tricky is where, you know, uh, someone has retired and they've, they've moved away from, from uh, their uh, their last known uh, affiliation. Um, you can try contacting the department where they, they were based and talk to the secretaries there and see if they know anything about the whereabouts. Um, that doesn't always work. Um, sometimes they'll still continue to publish. So you might wanna do a title search in something like um, academic search complete. Let's go back here. Um, you know, so let's go because even if even if they don't have a, an institutional affiliation they'll usually if they're a corresponding spawning author they'll have to have like some kind of contactable gmail account so let's so and i'm not i'm not even sure this guy's still alive but i i i know i know of him so i'm going to go put uh, banjo's name and see what's the most recent reference we have for him in academic search complete. And the most recent one we have, we have a Lydia Bandura. I don't think that's the Bandura I'm thinking of, and I can't remember that person's name now, their first name. But let's say we were interested in Andre Bandura. His name appears first or her name, and they are a corresponding author. And what do you know, you got a Gmail account there. So 
So yeah, that, that's, that's another way of, of tracking them down is just using uh, uh, parallel resources like Academic Search Complete. Um, if that fails, if you, if you simply can't find them and you can't find, uh, and, and, and you, you, you contacted the department where they were and nobody has the copyright within the department for, for the instrument, um, then I guess you just go through the list of uh, other, uh, other authors and see if, you, if anybody in that original group knows who, who, uh, who gets to speak for and, and, and grant that permission. Um, again, we're, we're, we're there to help with, with those sorts of queries. Can't guarantee anything because you know, this is where it really gets challenging is, is trying to, uh, to locate the, those, those folks. And sometimes you just can't get hold of anybody because you know, there are occasions when just nobody is around anymore. Yeah, that happens, and I, I, I don't have an answer for that one, <laughs> but, uh, but, but that, 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 those are rare. For, for the most part, we're able to find somebody who's able to grant permission. So yeah. All right, so that is, um, that's what I had to share in a nutshell, and uh, so I will go back here to the slideshow. And open it up to questions. Does anybody have any questions? Alrighty, well, if not, thank you all so much for your time. I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you think of any questions, you wanna uh, shoot them my way, my, uh, uh, my email is uh, michaelskinner at uttyler.edu. Um, and I'd be happy to. Hey, Michael, this is Hi, Belinda. Belinda. Hey. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this was a good review. And I was kinda, as, as you were doing that, I was kinda doing my own little thing and I, I, I found some cool things. So. Um, I guess in the past, I thought that there was a like database only for instruments and that you kind of had to have a like a special entry into that. So now I'm getting that really is just kind of a it's part of a, of a search. Is that correct? Yeah, the the databases that are database that, that are instrument only are happy and mental measurements yearbook. And those are rare um, for, for the most part. It's kind of. It's kind of an unregulated situation. So there are some publishers that are really good about capturing that metadata, and there are some that really don't care. <laughs> you know, so and and there are authors that are really good about including that stuff, and there are some that just don't. And the really tricky ones, and I didn't really cover this, the really, really tricky ones are the authors who they create their own instrument, they use it, they come up with this fabulous study, great results, but they don't name it and they don't reproduce it. Mm -hmm. So the only way you can get hold of the instrument is to contact them directly, which, you know, I mean, that's fine. It's just, it's just, a, you know, it's just an, an extra step you got to go through. But yeah, it's, it's really a case of um, when I'm looking for, when, when I'm doing a, like a, a, a search on behalf of faculty or, or graduate students, um, you try to leave no stone unturned. So, uh, so my usual procedure is I, I cover CINAHL complete. I cover APA Psych Info. I will look at at uh, Happy and Mental Measurements Yearbook with tests in print, um, and I will look at at uh, Google Scholar. Google Scholar, like I say, it, it's really good for 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 searching not only available from publishers, but they also have a lot of of um, entries available from the uh, the digital repositories of other institutions, um, and occasionally you'll find something there. Um, and and uh, of course, ProQuest dissertations and theses uh, online. So th those that I tend to focus on, and probably now that I'm aware of it, I'll probably uh, fo add um, PubMed to my, my arsenal of things. Although PubMed is a little bit more difficult just because they don't include that metadata in their, their detailed record. So you kind of have to go from, from actual full text document to full text document to, to track down that stuff. So if you're looking for a fast procedure, I would start, I would definitely start with CINAHL and Psych Info. Very good. Thank you so much. This was very helpful. Yep, no worries. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All right, well, thank you all for your time and y'all have a, a wonderful Wednesday.